Good evening and welcome to our worship time here this evening. We are blessed and grateful to be able to worship together as we journey through this Lenten season as one community gathered together. I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. In the name of the triune God, in whose presence we wait, the God who created all, the God who bore the cross, the God who dwells in us, we come to worship tonight. Amen. In quiet trust, in simple words, we enter a space for prayer. As we confess our sins, both secret and public, the door to God's heart is open and we enter into grace and mercy. O oh God, you see our secret hearts. You see when our love of self overshadows our love of neighbor. You know when our worship is veiled in empty words rather than contrite hearts. Forgive us when we seek to please others instead of pleasing you. Do not see us for our faults and do not go away from us. Keep us always in your presence so that we may be restored to the joy of your salvation. Sustain in us a willing spirit to treasure that which you desire so that our hearts will be opened in joy and gladness. In Jesus Christ, our guide and savior, we pray, amen. Dear friends, our God who sees all our hidden sorrows and sins, cleanses us within and without. Trust in God's forgiveness that you may be renewed and restored all for God's glory and God's purposes for your life. In Christ's name, amen. Together we sing our gathering hymn number 532.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, healer of our wounds and divisions, you sent Christ to heal the world and to gather those on the margins. Bring your healing power to us. May we extend your power and grace to those separated from their communities and those longing for a tangible sign of your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Congregation may be seated. We will read a portion of Psalm 34 responsively together. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from all them. He keeps all their bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil brings death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite the congregation to stand as we sing verse 1 of our gospel acclamation. Gospel according to St. Mark, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes. And when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. He lived among the tombs, and no one could restrain him anymore, even with a chain for he had often been restrained with shackles and chains. But the chains he wrenched apart and the shackles he broke in pieces, and no one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day, among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always howling and bruising himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and bowed down before him, and he shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you, by God, do not torment me. For he had said to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? He replied, My name is Legion for we are many. He begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now there on the hillside, a great herd of swine was feeding, and the unclean spirits begged him, send us into the swine, let us enter them. So Jesus gave them permission. And the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine, and the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and were drowned in the sea. 
The swine herds ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came to see what it was that had happened. They came to Jesus and saw the demoniac sitting there, clothed and in his right mind. The very man who had had the legion, and they were afraid. Those who had seen what had happened to the demoniac and to the swine reported it. Then they began to beg Jesus to leave their neighborhood. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed by demons begged Jesus that he might be with him. But Jesus refused and said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy he has shown you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and everyone was amazed. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There are strange stories in the Bible, and then there is this one that we heard in our gospel tonight. Not only are we confronted by a demon-possessed man, we hear that it's not simply one demon, but a legion of demons. And not only do we have demons, but we see these demons infest a herd of pigs and go toppling over a cliff. This is a strange story to witness. It is one of those stories that is so strange that we think it must be true because otherwise, why would something so fantastical even make it into the Bible? This seems like a story that borders on the unbelievable, except that we have the testimony of many in a story who witnessed what even they could not truly believe. We don't know how long this man had been possessed and tormented by these demons, but it had been long enough for his condition to have deteriorated in progressively worse ways, leaving him unable or unwilling to live among anyone in town. He was cast off into his own wilderness, living among the tombs. We are told that his physical strength had grown beyond the ability for anyone to restrain him. When we ponder this, we also realize in horror that for some time this man was successfully being restrained with shackles and chains but now he wrenches even those restraints apart. We aren't told that he was a danger to others, but he has harmed himself. The text says he bruises himself with stones. This is like something out of a horror movie or a nightmare story. We can only imagine how fearful the people were of this man. Our modern minds want to try and find an explanation for his condition, but nothing nothing easily comes to mind. We question, are there really demons like this in the world? Mark says when the man sees Jesus, even at a distance, the demon recognizes Jesus. This event happens relatively early in Jesus's ministry when not many people quite understand who Jesus is and what he is about. But the demon knows without any introduction. Indeed, other than John the Baptist, at this point in Mark's gospel, it is only the demons who recognize Jesus and declare him the Son of God. This legion refers to Jesus as Son of the Most High God. This demon knows that Jesus is a threat to his survival. 
where no other human being has been able to restrain this man, Jesus steps boldly in and contains the demons by his very presence. The demon demon asks for leniency. They ask to be allowed to enter the herd of pigs. And Jesus allows it. But the poor pigs are tormented and run right over the cliff, presumably to their death and perhaps the death of these demons. What a strange story. As strange and bizarre as this event is, though, what I find just as bizarre as a demon-filled herd of pigs is the response of the crowd. This crowd who knew the possessed man, this crowd who knew the savage effects that had been wrought upon him, when they saw him healed and well, Mark doesn't say that they were filled with joy. Mark tells us they were afraid. They were so afraid that they asked Jesus to leave their land. But why? Why were they afraid? What were they afraid of? Honestly, I think even they probably didn't really know. But what they did know is that they had been confronted with the reality of Jesus, this man who wields a power that is mightier than anything they had ever seen. A power that could subdue this most vicious of demons. A power to heal a man whom they knew to be afflicted in the most terrible way. The crowd, these people, had no answers for what they witnessed, but whatever they saw was so far beyond their comprehension that they wanted to turn from it. Rather than trying to learn more about Jesus, who even a demon proclaimed to be the son of the Most High God, rather than wanting to come closer, they pushed Jesus away instead. Jesus performed a life-changing miracle in the midst of these people. Jesus stepped in to help a man that had been estranged from his community and his family by these demons. Jesus possessed the ability to enter where no one else could. With great power, Jesus transforms this man's life. And everyone who saw what happened was transformed as well. But rather than embrace this transformation, rather than being intrigued by this, rather than letting themselves hope and wonder what more Jesus might do, they push him away instead. They do not want to do this hard work of trying to reorient themselves and their worldview to understand just who this powerful healer might be. What they saw was so dramatic and so transformative, they knew that if they engaged with Jesus, everything in their lives would change. They knew that they had seen something life-altering, and they said no to whatever it was that Jesus was up to. How often do we also fall victim to this? How often do we encounter the power of the Holy Spirit among us, standing on the precipice of powerful change to know that we have the ability to mold our lives to live more fully into the call of Christ, and we get fearful. We decide it is easier, less risky to just stick with the status quo. Change can be scary and uncertain, and it can open us up to a world that upends everything we ever thought we knew. But just like these folks who had an unexpected encounter with the mighty Son of God, when we do that, when we tell Jesus we'd rather just keep on doing what we've always done, and we'd really rather not have to confront what it means to know that Jesus is Jesus, 
the son of the most high God, we miss out on so much. We leave behind opportunities that might change the world for the better, that might guide us to a life more fully alive, more rich in its grasp of possibilities, more hopeful, a life more connected to the source of our life. When we decide to stay small, rather than risk what we might find on the path where Jesus walks, we miss out on the chance to be workers in the kingdom. And this man whom Jesus healed knew that. He understood fully and completely the power of what had happened to him. He begged Jesus to let him come with him. But Jesus declined his offer and instead tells him, go back to your community, a community that is made up primarily of Gentiles in the Decapolis, and tell them, tell them about what Jesus has done. And so he does. He is sent to be a witness and a testifier of truth, a truth so outrageous and so profound and so life-changing that he risks being called a fool. The power of what happened to this man could not be contained and should not be contained. Voices of those who know the truth, who have experienced Jesus and trust in his call to new ways, are called to leave their fear behind, to join together with those who dare to speak and proclaim Jesus, Son of the Most High God, and to name the ways in which this world needs to follow where he leads for the salvation of this desperately broken and suffering world. Through the wilderness of fear, we boldly go where we see Jesus lead. Amen. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. We will sing our Lenten devotional hymn.
I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. Let us pray. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for all the world around us, all for the sake of a world in need. We thank you, O God, for your life-giving word, for calling creation into being, declaring forgiveness from the cross, and delivering the spirit of rebirth. We praise you, O God, for your word. Your word is a lamp lighting our path, a mirror reflecting ourselves, a shield providing us refuge, a fire burning for justice and truth. Your word is sweeter than honey. It nourishes our bodies like milk. It sustains your people like bread. We receive your promises more treasured than gold. We praise you, God, for your word. Open our ears to your prophets, apostles, and saints, and to all the cries of the needy. Breathe into your church the mighty spirit of Christ, that heeding your voice of beauty and power, we are strengthened to serve wherever we are called by your word. We praise, praise you, God, God, for your word. To you, Father, Son, and Spirit, the source, word, and breath, we offer our thanks for your life-giving word. We praise you, God, for your word. Through these days of Lent, we plead for your spirit that, strengthened by your word, we may care for others and for the world you made and work for justice and peace for all. For your word in our hearts and minds. We praise you, O God, for your word. Through the trials of this time, we plead for the sure presence of your word here among us. Be with the people of Ukraine as they suffer the horrors and tyranny of war. May you shield the innocent from death and violence. May your peace surround those who have been killed. Your word is the Prince of Peace. Let there be peace upon this earth. End war in our midst. Save those who are perishing from starvation and deprivation and violence. We praise you, O God, for your word. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, fill us with courage and call us to walk in your ways for the sake of all the world. Into your hands, gracious God and Holy Spirit of might, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through our Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Amen. Father, who Amen. art Amen. in heaven, hallowed Amen. be thy Amen. name. Amen. Thy Amen. kingdom come, Amen. thy Amen. will be done Amen. on Amen. earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Holy people of God, practice your piety not before others, but before God. Give generously, but quietly. Pray constantly and confidently. Fast with gratitude to God. Store up that which is in your heart, for it cannot be taken from you. And may the blessing of God, who hears when you call, remain with you through these Lenten days and for all your days and forevermore. Amen. Amen. We sing our sending hymn, What Wondrous Love Is This?
God's love for me. May the Creator who fashions us together with all things, the Christ who leads us into a new beloved community, the Spirit who holds us in the communion of saints, one God, bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Join together in Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.